Well, what I wanted to do now, and this is now I'm moving away a bit uh, from economics. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to go through, I think it's four or five areas, where, where I'll think and I'll go through the literature and, and see, sort of see what are the factors that people have said affect the use of antibiotics and the development of anti antibiotic resistance. And the reason why I want to do that is that I think that it's important to understand the factors in order to talk about the solutions, okay? So it's still not a lot of economics, but it will come. Before I do that, uh, uh, there are a few important insights from a social science po point of view that I think is important to be aware of here. Uh, the first one is that this is a multi-source problem. And that's the one health insight that I have here first. We will have development of antibiotic resistance from many different sources. And you can apply exactly the same logic as the number of countries here. You can apply that to the number of sources here as well. It will be a weakest link problem here as well. If we deal with two of the sources but don't deal with the third source, it will still be a big problem. So we need to take care of the whole picture here in order to, to address this. This means, and that's the second insight, this means that most likely there is no single fix to this problem. So we, we need to sort of handle it into different sources, different types of behavior. We need to think about different types of solutions for different, different settings. And the, don't forget this insight, which is Still, I mean, antibiotics is good. Don't forget that, that, that people need antibiotics. Now, I'll do this fairly quickly. I want to talk about, I think it's four different areas, actually. Uh, I want to talk about sort of what are the main uh, uh, factors that, can, that, uh, that would be important for explaining behavior of people and the development of antibiotic resistance. The first set of factors, I call them environmental factors. And the first thing I have up there is large populations and overcrowding. Because large population and overcrowding will tend to mean that people are sick more often. It will tend to mean that diseases will spread more quickly, which will mean that we will use more drugs than otherwise. The second one is the ability to travel which will mean that people, since travel, transport costs have decreased drastically over the years, people will travel more often, which will mean that bacteria, diseases, will spread more easily than what it did before. Third, and this is now moving to developing countries, poor sanitation is most likely a huge factor explaining uh, the use of antibiotics. And fourth, and I won't talk much about that, I will have a few slides about that when I talk about that, but it's the use of antibiotics in, in agriculture and in, in animal husbandry. So these are four big factors that we need to think about when we think about uh, the use of antibiotics, when it comes to environmental factors. When it comes to what I call patient factors, there are also a number of, of, of important factors. The four, first one is that people might not, not, not adhere to the dosage requirements uh, uh, that, that the doctor prescribed them to. It might be that people self-medicate, they, they buy the drugs online or they borrow drugs from their sister or whatever. It might be that people actually don't have the right information on what is the appropriate behavior. And they might, for example, think that, that they would need antibiotics when they don't need it. Uh, which is, of course, pretty closely linked to lack of education and maybe even, even poverty. So again, five important factors explaining behavior and the use of antibiotics and development of antibiotic systems. Third, doctors aren't always good. <laughs> uh, they, they might actually sometimes be the culprit here as well. So there might be a few prescriber factors that we might want to look at. There might be economic incentives for doctors to over-prescribe antibiotics. 
Uh, what I have in mind here is, for example, well, maybe there are incentive systems in place that, 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 that uh, rewards doctors for using antibiotics. Or maybe they see this as a quick fix of, of, of problems instead of having a patient coming back again and again. It might be that uh, the doctors actually don't have sufficient information about certain settings. And third, it might be difficult for doctors when they face social norms in society that are saying one thing and they, uh, they need to either fight those social norms or, 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 or go with the flow and accept the social norms. And, and this was related to the first one, uh, the use of antibiotics is, of course, a substitute to, to uh, infection control. Lastly, what I call drug factors. And there are two uh, important things here. One is the availability of drugs. So the availability of drugs is most likely an important factor for explaining overuse of antibiotics. And the second is the development of new antibiotics. Or actually, I mean, it could be other things than new antibiotics. It could be new, new, new type of treatments that might not be related to antibiotics. So these are one, two, three, four. There were four. Four different areas with a number of different factors that can explain why there is overuse of antibiotics and why there is development of antibiotic resistance. And they're all based sort of from a social point of view, right? I haven't looked at sort of the, the medicine part of this. Now, what I want to do now is to think about these factors, think about these areas, and, and discuss a number of solutions. And the way I'll do that is that I'll, I'll define a number of different policies and then I'll just go into one of these areas and one of these factors and, and talk about that. So I won't talk about uh, all these factors. But before I do that, let me just g give you a sort of a flavor of how I think or how we as economists think when we think about something that we call policy evaluation. So what should we do in a society? What policies should we have? Well, as a scientist, I then, first of all, need to sort of know, well, what, what is the goal? What is the goal of the policy? Is it to reduce the use of antibiotics with 5% or, or is it to, to uh, stop antibiotic resistance or what, what is the goal? I need the goal in order to evaluate what I should do. Once I have the goal, and I mean, from a social point of view, that goal is not set by me as a researcher, it's set by society by our politicians or, uh, or by you as, as citizens. What should we do? Once uh, uh, we have a goal, the way I think about it then is this. I have this goal. How can I achieve this in the cheapest way possible? Okay? That's what I mean by cost efficient up there on the slide. And with cost efficient, I don't mean money only. Okay? It could be the goal, the policy that you does this in the simplest way for, for individuals. It could be the, uh, the solution that, that uh, sort of is simplest for the patient, even if it's more costly from a monetary point of view. So I don't mean cost efficient in a, in a narrow money wise. Uh, 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 term. However, from a social point of view, it might not be easy to sort of know, well, what should be the goal? Well, in order to determine what should be the goal, I would also need to talk about the benefits and costs of reaching different levels of the goal. But I won't, I won't really talk about that because that's, that complicates things a little bit more. So, what, what would be the appropriate level of uh, carbon dioxide emissions for Sweden, or what would be the appropriate level of use of antibiotics for Sweden? It's a much more complicated question than answering what should we do for a given goal. Now, there are two complications for antibiotic use uh, that we need to be able to handle. The first one is the uncertainty. 
We don't know exactly what will happen if we do this. There are pretty large uncertainties with any policy that we do, with any change in behavior that we do. So there will be uncertainty and risk, and we need to be able to handle that. that com that's the complication number one. Complication number two is that these goals, these policies, not only affect us that are in this room that live today, it will also affect future generations. So how should we think about this? Should we care about future generations at all, or, or should we just think about what's good and bad for us that lives today? Most people would say, no, we should most likely care about future generations. How should we do that then? Should they be seen as equals to us, those that live in the future? Or, or how do we know that they will think and like what we like? How, how do we know what level of income they will have in the future, etc.? So that's the same sort of second complication of thinking about policies, risk and future generations. But even if it's more complicated, I would say it's a sort of the same principle. Let's compare benefits, let's compare costs, and decide what we should do. I, I usually say that there, are, that there are three most important solutions. Uh, and the first one is to get the incentives right. The second one is to get the incentives right. And the third one is to get the incentives right. Okay? If you do that, everything will be solved. Now, this sounds like a very economist point of view of looking at this. And again, I don't mean incentives only in terms of money. So, so when, I, when I use the word incentive, I mean that people will react to different stimuli in the environment. We will react to money. We will react to social norms. We will react to, to quality of life. We will react to what the doctor is suggesting or, or what the doctor is not suggesting, etc. We will react to a number of different things. And in order to affect people's behavior, we need, in the right direction, we need to get these incentives right. I want to talk about five different ways of changing behavior, five different ways of affecting the, the incentives. The first one is simply to forbid stuff. You're not allowed to do this. You're, you're not, we don't allow plastic bags anymore in the store, period. That's what we would call a ban or a mandate. Second one is to introduce economic incentives, so monetary incentives, for example, using a tax on certain types of behavior, on the use of, of uh, carbon, uh, carbon uh, sorry, on the use of fossil fuels, on the use of antibiotics, or whatever. Third one is to provide people with information, giving them information in order to affect their behavior. This is trauma, right? Fourth is to give them a decision support, so getting it easier for people to do the right thing. And the fifth is what I call the decision environment. This is about affecting the actual, mostly physical decision environment that we act in and see if we can affect people in, 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 in that environment. And you all know the answer to this question, right? That's, that's an easy... Now, before I go into these, uh, uh, these, I just wanted to, if, if, you would, if you would ask people, sort of, well, what should we do in order to solve this, uh, solve this problem, most people would have these uh, five things on their list, that would be my guess. Might not always be on top five, but these would be things that people would say, this is really important to get, get right. So, improve public health, improve sanitation, infection control, etc., and vaccination, not the least. Phase out the use of antibiotics in agriculture, for, for, at least for growth purposes. Uh, affect incentives for prescriptive drugs. Uh, affect incentives uh, 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 for, for, for use of antibiotics. And investments in new drugs. And I'll come back to each of these factors. And the way I'm going to do that is that I'll talk of at least the two first and the last one, and I'll apply these policies 
to each of these these sort of uh, factors.